and say these four things. I want you to say to your family that the Khatib today told us that I must gather you guys and I must say these things to you. First, let them know about this great visitor that is coming. And that in order to be able to benefit fully, we must do four things. The first one is to have the correct mindset. You see, quite often a lot of us go into Ramadan without the proper mindset. Without the proper mindset, your Ramadan will not be very beneficial. So we must first have the correct mindset. And that mindset is to say to ourselves, this is going to be the best Ramadan that I have ever experienced. How can it be less? How can you go into Ramadan saying it's not going to be my best? So you've got to go in understanding that I am going to do whatever it takes to make this one the very best Ramadan for me yet. Because this one, if Allah allows us to live this year, may be the last. So you have to have this mindset. And if I'm going to make this Ramadan the best one that I ever had, obviously I cannot do the same things that I did in the last Ramadan. Because then it will just be equal to it. I have to do some stuff differently. Whatever it is I was doing, I have to do more. I have to do longer. I have to do smarter. I have to up the curve in this world for it to become the best one that I have yet. This is the mindset that we must go into Ramadan. Do not fall into the tragedy of Ramadan comes, you go to the same masjid, you meet the same people, you recite the same set of ayahs, you do the same set of fast, you, you do the same stuff routinely, you will get rewards there. But it will not be the best Ramadan that you possibly can have by just doing the same set of things that you do. You've got to say this year, what is it I can do different? If I used to make eight rakah, tarawih, and then leave, and go home and do, maybe watch TV or something else, I should say this year, I'm going to say it. If, if I was just reciting portions of the Quran, I would set a bigger goal. You've got to set, this is my second goal, aggressive goals for Quran. Don't be shy. If your bosses come to you today and says, look, brother, sister, you work the weekends, and I'm going to give you $6,000 for every day you work for the next four weekends. We will go home and tell our wives, bye. I'm not going to see you for the four weekends of Sabbath. Because it's an opportunity of a lifetime. So when Ramadan comes, you cannot be lazy. You cannot be complacent. You cannot just operate like it's the regular place. So we must set goals, aggressive goals. Test yourself, push yourself to the limits. Really find out and discover, because that's what Ramadan is doing, how great and powerful you are. If I can fast the whole month, I can do more. So set aggressive goals with your family. Let every child in your home write down two or three goals. Don't write goals for the whole month. Break it into four parts. So this is my goal for this week. This is the goal for the next week in Ramadan. This is the goal for the third week. And the fourth. So you can review it. Set with your family and do this. And then set up a family schedule. We used to give the kids in the madrasa Ramadan charts, in which every day they fast, they put a star, a misalah they make, to keep track. Set schedules of where you're going to visit, what you're going to do, how much money you're going to spend. Set up a family schedule and put it on the wall of your homes. Because this is prime time. This is the moment of the beginning. Set up a schedule. And then lastly, try to prepare as much as you can before the month comes. What I mean, if you got to mow your lawn, mow them now. Don't wait till Ramadan reaches. 
if that roof is leaking and you need to fix it, don't wait till brother. You want to be as free as possible from the mundane chores of the world to be available for God. So you want to take care of all those pending things that you know you have to do as much as you can this weekend so that you can be as free as possible to participate in the real things that Ramadan demands. Get those out of the way. So I know some of the sisters, they would cook pastries and they would freeze it and they would cook a lot of food and have it so, so they don't have to be cooking throughout Ramadan. Preparing ourselves. Taking the Quran off the shelf that may have been sitting there for the whole year. Dust it off and put it in the center dining table. Have everybody with their books and their Quran in a central place. Assign us a place in the Salama. Make your whole Ramadan ready. Is what I'm saying to you. So that everything is in place, ready to go. For quite often we wait too late to prepare for Ramadan, and before we know the Ramadan is finished. When we are now settling down to enjoy the month, it's over. Now is the time to do that. If you go home and do this with your families, your Ramadan will change you permanently. You will not be the person who, you know, some people, they stop smoking for the month and then after the month they go back to school. Some people, they recite Quran for the month and after the month they stop reciting the Quran. You know, because the Ramadan didn't really do a permanent effect on them. But if you do what I say, Ramadan will have changed you in a way that you will be uncomfortable to return to what you were. You will have become a new person that will become uneasy with returning to your old ways. You will have become a person of taqwa. Because that's the essence of what Ramadan really does. Lastly, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does in order to help us to get taqwa Taqwa is trying to keep away from the things which is harmful. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to help us and strengthen us to do that, He says, I'm going to ask you to keep away from the things that is halal. So if I am able to have the discipline to keep away from things which is good for me, how much easier this would be for me to keep away from things which is bad for me. And in Ramadan, what does Allah do? He made food haram in the day, halal in the night. Haram in the day, halal. It's not that the status of the food is changed. It is the command that is changing, that we are responding to. The food remains wholesome. The same food which is harm in the day, you can wait at night and eat the same food. The food doesn't change, the command changes. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is conditioning us to respond to His command. By saying, make it harm in the day, halal in the night. And so we are responding to that, so we learn obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you do that for one month. You become conditioned to say, Oh Allah, what is it you want me to do? I am now ready to obey other big things. My brothers and sisters, this visitor of ours will see people in Pakistan who just undergo a tremendous flood. People have lost everything. And they don't know how they run about themselves. They have no homes, no food, no nothing. They don't even have ground that is dry to stand on. Everybody in this Ramadan too with high hopes. The people in Palestine and all over the world. And I urge you, as you get up in the morning and you try to figure out from the 15 different items you can choose from to eat, and in the afternoons we fight for the biggest piece of meat, the biryani. Take some time to remember those brothers and sisters who have nothing. And ask Allah to open your hearts to share from your wealth whatever little you can or however much you can for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On Yawm al you do not want those people to stand up and point at you and say, while you were starving, you could have helped. But you chose not to, even though shaitan was May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understand this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our families to get excited about the time that Ramadan is coming and the days and begin our preparation in earnest and in anticipation of all these blessings and opportunities that will be in store for us. May Allah bless you Ramadan and give you and your family genuine
mobilizing their food and has healthy earth and has healthy earth. Right. Right. Omar ibn al-Qattar, when Ramadan arrived, see where Ramadan comes? What we do, we pat each other back, we howl, we love Mubarak, we love Mubarak. The Sahaba, they never quite did that. In fact, Omar ibn al-Qattar said, I used to tell my friends, goodbye. I used to say goodbye. Because I now don't have the time and the luxury of hanging out and doing the whole stuff. I now have to really focus on something. So, Goodbye for the month. I am now getting connected with new things. Ramadan gives you a chance, brothers and sisters, to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a special way. Ramadan gives you a time to connect to the Muslim. Ramadan gives you a time to become attached to your families. Ramadan gives you a time to become attached to your fellow believers. Ramadan gives us an opportunity to become attached and have empathy for the poor and the less fortunate. Ramadan gives us a time to become connected to our own selves. See? Allah says, some people they forget Allah, and Allah wants them to forget their own selves. So we sometimes forget our own selves. Ramadan gives us a chance to become connected to our own selves. Ramadan gives us a chance to become connected to our own selves. Ramadan gives us a chance to revisit ourselves and to, 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 to really get to understand who we are and try to become something that is truly special and loving to Allah Quick review. The four things to make this Ramadan the best. One, mindset. I will make this the best Ramadan. Two, goals. Aggressive goals split up into four weeks. Three, schedule. Make time to accomplish everything. And four, prepare. Finish pending projects and pre-prepare. That is the four things to make this Ramadan the best Ramadan ever.